Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining in with us again today. We are on our third installment of our retirement living series um, coming to you from the summit. We are a retirement community here in Lynchburg, Virginia, a life plan community, and we are doing our best to help educate people and uh, help keep you occupied during some of your extra time that you have right now. And so today we are going to be talking about wellness in retirement. And we've brought to you one of our experts, uh, Gina Meadows is our executive director here. And um, she has an extensive background in mental health. And um, a lot of the residents here that are joining us probably have been able to talk with her about different uh, wellness aspects when it comes to your mental health. And so we were talking about topics and things of importance that would be good for us to share. And this came up. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, we are part of a group. We, the summit, are part of a larger organization called Leading Age. And there is um, a national organization as well as a state organization. And so they do a lot of research and put information together and really help communities that are dealing with different issues. And um, Gina found this spectacular article. And so she's gonna really talk to us um, today, kind of talk through that article, some ideas about ways to be, um, be good at retirement. I always say there's um, things we have to practice at. And I think um, practicing being good at retirement mm -hmm. is, is um, important. So why don't you talk us to us today and kind of share with you, with us, your insight on um, different ideas to be mentally well. Thanks, and thanks to everyone tuning in, and hello to the residents that live at the summit. Imagine my surprise when I found an article on leading age that was not about COVID, woohoo, and it involved a field that I'm very much interested in about mental health. My surprise in this article, Brenda and Jonathan, is that Retirement can have a detrimental effect on your mental health if you don't practice and go for it. So I'm going to have to talk through the article um, by looking at it. Thank you all for tuning in and let's see what we can learn from it. Um, most of us look at retirement and think, wow, I can't wait till I retire. I'm going to get so much done. My life is going to change. <laughs> I'm going to do amazing things when I'm no longer cooped up in an office. We all assume that retirement is going to be a fantastic experience. You hear it all the time, Brenda. I know that you do. But there is a hidden danger or a hidden um, problematic issue that come up sometimes with folks, and they don't realize it until it's too late. The, the danger isn't physical. Um, it, it's an insidious danger, and it isn't really um, emotional either. It's a mental health issue that comes from loss and your loss of purpose and how that purpose in life has kept you glued together. You feel more powerful and many times those of you who are parents, you know when you go back to work after you've had children, you realize, wow, I'm so competent at my job. That's mm. more who I am. I can juggle all of this. It can have an effect on your mental health. Um, most people thrive in retirement while there are those that quickly fall into mental health decline, says Dr. David Ludden of the North Carolina State University. Um, our jobs give us a psychological workout that keeps us mentally fit, like our physical fitness. Uh, by contrast, our home life should be much more peaceful. Many of you are living with spouses that you've been with a long time. It's routinized and you're rarely taxed mentally living in your, the comfort of your home. And when you retire, according to this article and according to my friends and folks that we care for here, you do run the risk of losing opportunities to challenge yourself mentally and to stay cognitively fit. Um, our jobs provide us number one, it's number one bullet in my article is mental challenges. They give your brain that workout that you need every day. You have to find creative solutions to problems. You have to strategize and plan spreadsheets and present them. And, and that gives you a workout. You don't even realize you're having it because sometimes days at the office can get crazy. But that crazy is saving your life, believe it or not. Oh, structure. That's the second important piece that a job provides for you. It gives you structure. It keeps you focused and helps you feel determined. 
our jobs easily provide us with a lot of structure, meetings, um, planned huddles, et cetera, deadlines, deadlines <laughs> right? And all of that keeps you on track too. And believe it or not, it's an external force that's helping you be glued. Positive reinforcement. I try to remember to tell Brenda every day how much I appreciate her work and how good she is at, at her job. When you do good work, you have a feeling of accomplishment and it's really hard to replace that in the privacy of your home with your children that are young, Jonathan, and even when they're grown. Um, promotions, raises, all of these reinforce the fact that you're doing a good job and motivates you to continue to just keep at it, to keep pushing for more. Social opportunities, this is for the women in our lives. Um, our jobs expand our circle of friends, mm -hmm give us a professional network to work with and an outlet in so many ways. W women seem to prefer and use these social interactions more than men in studies. I don't mean to have a bias here. Um, it's just something that I've learned, but they're impor an important part of what makes us tick. And when you le lose these, when, when you're not working any longer and your brain doesn't have anything to focus on, it's missing some structure, um, you begin to feel um, a bit of stagnation. The article goes a little bit into depression, and I think they throw out a, st a statistic saying that as many as 40% of folks might feel um, a type of clinical depression. I love the word stagnation because that's really the opposite of being generative and working hard at your work. Um, you feel unproductive without something to do and unresourceful without any problems to solve. And so these critical mental elements are at force and you can plan ahead to cope adaptively with this. Um, they even in, our, in mental health, in my mental health world, there's a name for this. It's called goal disenchantment. And you think, whoa, how, how can I get that enchantment back again? How can I get engaged with life? It's not always easy. But I know from reading this article and from talking with friends and working at the summit, there are six ways to build a healthy retirement. It does take practice. Um, the most important one is uh, staying active, physically active. Your body is like a, a honed machine, of course, and it's critical to stay active in retirement as well. Not only will physical activity help maintain your body, but exercise, as you know, helps release chemicals in your brain, dopamine, et cetera. And it makes you happier, says, you should hear what Brenda yes. Dixon does. For we've been, we've been uh, talking about that, my um, husband and I, you can easily get out of routines and we've all had those disruptions recently and um, just getting back to running or exercising, it's incredible what it does, yeah. what um, endorphins that releases and just mm -hmm. makes you feel good. So a natural that's high. a great point. And when you feel good, you are really able to focus on other aspects about it. So of course, stay active um, and focus on learning. Even after retirement, learning can be incredibly beneficial. Learning something new is important. Um, I tell you ar around here, um, I can just tell from people during coffee talk or whatever, they're still vibrant, Brenda, you know that. Mm -hmm. They have interesting conversations about things that they are learning. Um, this process keeps your brain active, keeps it focused, and there is a lot of data, interestingly, about learning languages, that you are never too old to learn a new language or refresh your memory on a language that perhaps you learned in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a couple of residents working on their Spanish right now. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard about that. Really interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> focus on learning. Number three, the reason to move to a retirement community because it does provide instant fun is to be social. When you leave work and you leave your job, you're leaving that network that you have spent a lot of time building, especially if you've been in one job or particular profession for a long time. Stay, stay social as much as possible. Um, stay in touch with your former coworkers. But when you move into a retirement community, that instant fun, we have resident life um, activities that provide an opportunity for you to meet new people. And I took a quote straight off the leading age um, website that said, I moved to a retirement community. I've learned it's fun to grow with people 
that are aging and are just like me. And I thought that was a very fun quote. Mm -hmm. You'll have plenty of opportunities to be social in a community. Um, oh yeah, volunteering. Oh my goodness. Uh, there are fewer things in life that make you happier than when you help someone else. As a matter of fact, it's a, it's a mental health tenet and the way we ther do therapy or work with folks is to teach them if you're feeling sad or stagnating inside yourself, try to look out instead of look in for a portion of every day. Volunteerism is known to be the secret to happiness and it comes in all forms. It doesn't have to be noble, it can be your church. Um, here at the summit, we have folks who drive other residents to their appointments, who voluntarily go out and remove trash from our walking trails. Mm. Um, there are so many things that you can do. You, if you have physical fitness too, you can do Habitat for Humanity. Um, and actually, the, we still have several Appalachian Trail Club members who live in our summit retirement community and they host bird watching events or outdoor activities that's really important for volunteering i kept a little fun running list with our resident life coordinator but something on here too we have folks that are fostering animals here mm -hmm. cats particularly um, as a type of volunteerism it really doesn't have to be big or giant or noble but it creates purpose sure. with human beings and we can help you find opportunities to volunteer if you want, if, if you move to the summit. Um, number five is kind of an odd one, and it is hobbies, but it's actually telling you to set goals with your hobbies. They are always a great way to spend time in retirement. They help you fill up your time with something you enjoy. They give you a sense of purpose, but the writer of this article wants to you to take your work strategies and apply them to your hobbies and set a goal. Hmm. I have an example from a friend who lives in a retirement community in Pennsylvania, and she's a photographer. And last time I visited her, pre-COVID of course, I saw a list of schedule on her refrigerator that is talking about um, like she is learning outdoor photography and then she switched to black and white and by June 1st she had planned to have 90 days worth of black and white photos to work with hmm. and then my friend showed her an application on the, on the um, phone that you can take and actually take the black and white photos and enhance them and I think it was called Picasso or some sort of thing and so she's strategizing on how she will set her hobby goals um, I hope it's fun for listeners to listen to, but you should, li I took the most unusual hobbies of the summit that I could think of. Um, besides I'm sure you golf, found some good ones. <laughs> I found some juicy ones, Brenda. <laughs> how, about, how about this one? Um, well, I told you about fostering animals and cats. We have a person who lives here who collects gold in odd forms hmm. and is in an online club. And I can talk, talk about that to anybody who's interested. We have a lot of photographers here, but bird photography. Um, we have a person here who lives at the summit who in retirement took up the drawing of nudes, not prior to retirement. Um, we have somebody who is selling her painting. She never painted before she moved into a retirement community, but paints and sells on Instagram now. Wow. And now oh, donates, the pro donates the proceeds to Habitat, excuse me, not to Habitat but to the Animal Welfare League, which I think is really cool. Um, we have a resident, an older, much older resident, who's really active with Ancestry.com on Zoom, the Zoom applications within her oh. family, and she's collecting data okay. doing that, and that drives her fun every day. She gets up excited about what she's going to do on that. Um, um, there's a gentleman who lives here who never baked in his life, but now bakes. <laughs> You I love that. Retirement. We probably enjoyed some of his baking. Yes, <laughs> we have. You have on birthdays. Um, there's somebody else who's into her. Who's in her hundreds. She's past the hundred year mark, but she never made pickles until she retired. Now she makes pickles and teaches people such as me how to make pickles, which is cool. Um, we have a we have a re resident who does animal art out of things that she finds in nature and mm. gives us gifts. Um, learning a musical instrument, a resident or two, a cellist comes to mind who had never picked up a cello prior to retirement. 
Oh, and our former um, founding director of the summit picked up the cello in his retirement. Yeah. He had not held that instrument before. But setting those hobby goals and having hobbies. And then number six is to make a schedule. Part of what you're missing, and you didn't know you were missing it, is structure in your life. And set a schedule. Um, we've noticed a lot of folks here who get up early in the morning and they still dress in business casual mm -hmm. and read the newspapers and look forward to talking with staff and with one another. I think that is really cool. They, they live on schedules. This, the, the schedules help you stay focused through the day and it's really critical when you no longer work in an office. Um, and of course, develop a schedule that works for you and your biorhythms because it is true one of the great joys is not having to get up with an alarm clock, but make a schedule that works for you. And um, those are the hints in this article. Any viewer that we have, we could forward it to them if they would like to see it for We've themselves. been uh, doing some follow-up with people, um, and so definitely I'm happy to uh, send out um, this article to people. And then if anyone has any comments or wants to add some, maybe some hobbies or um, activities or things that you've been doing, um, feel free to send those in, um, as well as any other questions. Um, actually, we did have uh, one or two that came in. Um, so someone said, what are some of the ways the summit helps with structure? Um, and we were sure, um, let me see if this is, okay. And then separately during COVID-19 that's changed things, um, but under normal circumstances or optimal circumstances, how does the summit help avoid social isolation? So, oh, isolation, excuse me. Yeah. Um, so, I think going back to the structure, Gina kind of touched a little bit on that, but um, just having routines. Um, one of the things as you were talking, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways people can become involved, but here at the summit specifically, um, you know, we have things that are set up specifically like resident council. Um, we have committees and uh, committee chairs. And um, so there's different ways that people um, really can begin structuring their day, whether it's around physical activities with walking groups and exercise classes to um, some of the other things that they can be become involved in. Um, even things like domino groups and oh goodness, yes. um, poker clubs yes. and yes. I don't know, you may have some many other, um, other ideas with um, how the summit specifically can help uh, people with structure. Oh, well, providing activities in resident life and posting them. COVID has been very challenging, um, extremely challenging with residents here, um, but I've seen people with their IT skills moving forward so terrifically, right. sharing photos, um, and something really important to remind people, and folks who come by our offices to talk mm -hmm. to us, I do remind them, it, staying connected through the telephone, um, through email, through snail mail with your family. Be sure to reach out during times such as this. There's always somebody, that you can spread some cheer to. Um, we have residents that are moving into the summit that are writing letters that we distribute. Um, yeah, that's been really yeah. terrific. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, so I guess to review, tell us again the six, the six um, if you could give us the six headings sure. for that. So sure. the first one is? Stay active. Stay active. Stay active. Okay. The next one is focus on learning. Make sure that you are learning something that's interesting to you. Um, the next one is be social. Mm -hmm. Whether it's natural for you or not, if you move into a retirement community, <laughs> it's hard to avoid that. Uh, volunteer. Recognize how important getting back, looking out instead of looking in is. Um, oh yeah, set hobby goals, which I think is unusual, but I could see that that could work and I, I see plenty of that action here. And build a schedule. Build a schedule. We did have um, one more question that came in. Um, it says, how have you seen residents combine um, physical exercise and socializing? So I think, again, that probably goes back to the group activities. 
Um, we've had in the past, I'm not sure, I'd have to check with our, with Andrea, our resident life coordinator, but if there's any um, challenge walking groups, you know, there's been um, different things like that. COVID has caused um, a big change in how we do things and how people are getting together, but a lot of those, um, even those Zoom, um, like we're joining, you all are joining us today, we've been doing a lot of things on Zoom with friends. I know the book club has met some, yes. and um, there's also fitness classes. We've been sharing different ways for groups to get together with that. So I don't know if you have any other thoughts about um, how they've maybe specifically residents were able to combine exercise and socializing. I heard that there was a fun group of residents that actually played dominoes at the gazebo with masks and social distancing. <laughs> Outside. Yeah, very good. Yes. So, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely some, um, some good opportunity. And what we want to share is some tips that will be helpful to you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, many of you don't live in a retirement community. Maybe you're thinking about it. Um, and these tips are helpful to you even at home. But also, um, we just thought it would highlight how um, with these six steps, a lot of these can very easily be met um, in a retirement community like the summit. And so um, if you have any feedback, any uh, suggestions or comments that you'd like to share, you can reach out to me via email. We will be uh, sending out the link um, to this program today so you can share that with your friends. And then just one more reminder um, to you all that are out there listening. Um, for those of you that aren't already here at the summit, um, if you are interested in taking a look around, getting some information, while we're still close to visitors, we do have opportunity to visit remotely um, through Zoom and other virtual applications. And so we're happy to, um, to help educate you, help answer questions, and know that we're still here for you as you're thinking about your future. So thanks so much for joining in. Gina, thanks so much for coming today. Um, this has been a lot of fun. And um, we'll look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.